Ray, you're not on the line, right? Hey, everybody. Let's do a quick sound check. Are you guys hearing me? Okay. Sweet. Okay. Um, like I was saying in chat, uh, this is a brand new monitor. Uh, it's a whole new setup for me with my Mac. So uh, please forgive any momentary lapses of sanity or anything at all like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen and Hopefully, this will still all look great. And you guys can tell me. So, are you guys seeing my Chrome browser now? And hopefully, it's nice and readable. Sweet. I'm, I'm really, really surprised. The uh, resolution on this monitor is pretty darn high, and normally I have to bump it down. Uh, but I'm just going to assume that magical fairies are making everything work great, and I'm going to roll with it. So, hello everybody. Uh, I am Raymond Camden. I am a developer evangelist for Adobe. Uh, my primary focus is pretty much the web. Um, I've been really, really getting into HTML5 and JavaScript lately. Uh, if you follow my blog at RaymondCamden.com, you can see most of my blog posts are talking about that. And it, typically it's me struggling to learn stuff and sharing that with others. But uh, I definitely encourage you to follow my blog. Um, if you have any questions that you don't get a chance to uh, ask during this session, my blog has a contact form. Uh, I love to get those questions in because a lot of times it leads to great blog entries. So definitely drop me a line and I'll be happy to uh, try to help you out. Uh, I am on Twitter at CFJediMaster. And I promise I only talk about serious, important stuff on Twitter, so it's really safe to follow me. So we're talking about brackets today. What exactly is brackets? Uh, if you go to the website and look at their little marketing pull line, you can see that it's an open source code editor built with the web for the web. So what does that mean in English? It's an editor built with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS focused on helping you write HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So what exactly are we talking about here? So there are a lot of editors out there. Uh, I've been doing web development, or I should say programming, for a long time. I think I've used pretty much every editor out there. Um, I've done a lot of work in the EV editor. Uh, EV makes VI look fancy. That's uh, an actual screenshot of uh, what it looks like. Um, I did a lot of MUD programming in that to really date myself as being an old guy. You can also do programming if you want in Notepad. Uh, you know, it works, uh, but not really the best environment out there. And of course, on the other side of the spectrum, you have tools like Eclipse. And this is an actual screenshot. And is a great example of uh, why I don't use Eclipse anymore. Uh, I believe there's something like 13 or so panels there, and there's no way in heck I could I could be productive with that much going on. So, I think the point is, you know, there's certainly a lot of options out there. Uh, but as personally myself, as I have moved more and more into web development. I'm finding a lot of the editors out there don't necessarily work well with what I want to do when I'm building web pages. So let's look at brackets. And that's a screenshot of it right there. You can see it's a very, very simple interface. What makes brackets special? You know, why should you care about this? Number one thing is that it's optimized for web development. Brackets cares pretty much about one thing, HTML. JavaScript and CSS. If that is what you're doing, then Brackets is going to be, I think, one of the best tools out there for you. Uh, it's not going to have things built into it like source control, for example. It's going to have support for uh, the things that you really do day to day. I just saw a question come up. Let me quickly hop back over. Can the screen come up to take over the whole desktop? I see, everybody said it was fine at first. All right, let me just maximize the screen. And you guys tell me, how does that look? I can still see your comments in the uh, side. Is that better or worse? The same? 
I thought I could see comments, unless no one's typing. Can you guys still hear me okay? And now it's bueno. <laughs> All right, I see a few people saying that it's okay. Yeah, the URL bar, you won't have to worry about, I promise. <laughs> But if you guys can read uh, Chrome okay, then I think we're good to go. All right. And you guys can just tell me again once uh, brackets comes up. If that's too small, uh, I can definitely bump down the resolution. See, I knew I was going to have to do that. But we'll see. I'll let uh, Upendra finish typing. All right. Let's go. So in terms of some of the details about brackets, uh, it is an open source MIT license. Uh, it's available on GitHub. Um, if GitHub is kind of scary to you, and I, I know that everyone loves and raves about GitHub, but there's still a lot of people out there who just don't get the whole idea behind GitHub. Uh, there actually are installers available for both Windows and OS X. Uh, in terms of Linux support, there's no official installer for that, no official support yet, but there's a lot of community work being done uh, to get it uh, running on Linux. And by the way, it's also going to be free. So yeah, you can go to GitHub, you can go to the URL, I'm going to show it later, you can download either from GitHub or download the installer, and you can start using it right now without paying a cent. So it's a quick visual tour, and again, you guys can tell me if this looks a bit too small, and if so I'll go ahead and bump down my resolution. Uh, I'm not running brackets right now because I want you guys to see how long it took to start up. Uh, it may not convey very well over Connect. Uh, but if you've ever launched Eclipse and then gone to get a cup of coffee while Eclipse did everything it had to do uh, to get itself ready for you actually to do work, then you will appreciate something that can load a little bit quicker. So this is Brackets. Uh, for the most part, it shouldn't be too radically different from an editor. I mean, you have your typical file menus. And let me actually ask real quick in the Connect room. Uh, let me go ahead and maximize this. How does this look to you guys? in terms of resolution. Can you guys see the main UI and the, the text, the menus up top, etc.? Everybody happy with this? Can't see text fuzzy. Okay. Yeah, let me go ahead and bump down the uh, resolution a bit. I knew I was going to have to do that eventually. So we can go ahead and do that. All right, so how's that, guys? That much better? Okay, let me focus on brackets here. If you guys can keep typing and let me know if it's okay. Oddly, I'm not seeing the comments anymore on the right-hand side. Much better, sweet. Okay, let me get Chrome back resized here. Okay, so back to brackets. All right. So again, it, you know, for the most part, uh, fairly typical, nothing too radically different here. Certainly, uh, it's a much, much more simpler interface. Uh, there are no projects per se. It's going to be folder based. Uh, so if you ever have hated uh, an editor that forced you to define a project and say where it is and all that, uh, you do not have to worry about that with brackets. Resize that one more time. Uh, on the left hand side, you do have a quick interface to get to your uh, recently used projects. I can switch, for example, to my testing zone, which is full of lots and lots of junk. Uh, and to be clear, this is a real application. This is not running in the browser. Uh, but everything you see here is built with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And I'll give you a great example of what that means. You see on top here where it has my current file name, uh, test2.html. On the left-hand side, I can see I'm working in a folder called Testing Zone. Uh, one of the things that I have a problem with is remembering where my folders and stuff are. So I would typically, for example, forget where the actual physical location of this file is. If I mouse over this file, you can see, and hopefully that's showing up well in Connect, that I have the entire path showing up there uh, as some title hover text for this. What's cool is that uh, when Brackets was early on in, in development and I noticed that, that that wasn't there, that's one of the features that was important to me. 
Well, I was actually able to go into the bracket source code, find the JavaScript that you know, basically wrote this, uh, this text out and just add the title attribute uh, to it using vanilla jQuery code that I've used in any other number of sites out there and add this feature to brackets. So yeah, it's not really a terribly important feature, uh, but just kind of shows you know, how cool it is that I can reuse my existing web knowledge that actually hacked on the editor itself. I, I find that really, really darn cool. Uh, so I showed you the folders. If I switch back over here to the getting started one. Uh, again, you have nice color coding, uh, pretty much kind of what you would expect in a typical application. So let's start talking a bit more about what you would not expect. Some of the cooler features and what makes brackets kind of neat. So one of the biggest features, I think, is the one called live development. Now, what do we mean by that? So your typical web development process may look something like this. You find a bug, right? So you switch to your editor, okay? You type some stuff in. You save, you tab back to your web browser, you reload it, and you curse because you still haven't fixed it. So you tab back, you type some more stuff, you save it, you tab back again to your browser, you reload again, and it's still broken. And if this process looks familiar to you, then you know that it could be pretty darn frustrating. Um, especially if you're running 20 or so apps at one time and you all tab to the wrong one and have to all tab back again to it and it's just not fun. But what about something like Chrome DevTools? Um, if you follow my blog, you know that I am a huge fan of Chrome DevTools and I recommend it to everybody. So where does this, where does Chrome DevTools kind of fit into that process? Well, right now you can use Chrome DevTools to fix problems, right? So. I have here a website that has a horrible, horrible problem. I'm going to use Chrome DevTools to go in there and start inspecting the DOM and fixing the CSS. So you can imagine me kind of going through here and tweaking my CSS, maybe editing the HTML directly in Chrome DevTools, and I can see it update there, no problem. I can work on this until I get it working right. You know, this is exactly the way that I had intended for the page to look. At this point though, I have a problem. So I may have modified like 10 different things, but I have no context for what I changed. All of that was actually done in Chrome DevTools. It wasn't actually done on the file system. So I kind of lost all of that. Brackets uh, creates a way for us to do that, but have it live within the editor and the browser at the same time. So let's actually look at an example of this. And I'm going to kind of maneuver my browser around here a bit just to make sure both these guys can fit on screen. And my resolution is a bit smaller now. So let me make sure everyone's still kosher. All right. Sweet. People still see it. So, in the upper right-hand corner of brackets, I have my lightning bolt. This is what I'm going to use to engage live development. Now, this is going to talk to Chrome. Let me click that again. There we go. Now, the first time you do this, uh, it needs to relaunch Chrome in a mode that allows brackets to talk to Chrome. I've already done that, so it doesn't need to restart it. Uh, but you will typically see that warning when you first begin using this feature. Uh, after that, like you just saw, I was able to turn it on and I didn't have to restart Chrome. So I'm looking at this web page, and you know, I, you know, I talk about how I like JavaScript, but in my heart, I am really a hardcore designer. Uh, I love CSS. I make great-looking websites. So I want to work on this and start making this look a little bit better, right? Because again, you know, I have, I have these great design skills. I should really use them. So I'm going to open the, I'm going to open up the CSS file. And what's kind of cool is that as I click around in here, I'm getting live updates in Chrome showing the parts of the CSS that match with what I'm clicking. So if I click on my headers, you can see that they are showing up as being highlighted. 
If I click on the image, for example, I could see that as well. So right away I can see, you know, in the file, this part modifies this part of the DOM. So if I want to go in here and start tweaking, making things look a little bit nicer, you know, certainly 1.3M is not the right value for this. It should be 2.3. Um, I can see that it updates actually while I type. I can go in here and say certainly this would be a much better look for the site. Uh, I think this is a dramatic improvement. Notice that I've not saved the file. So if I realize that I, I kind of screwed up here, I can just go in here and I could have, you know, save things back uh, without having actually modified the code yet. Save this. I can also do the same thing with HTML. The only difference is that I do have to actually save the file first. But notice though that I don't have to go in there and actually reload the, the browser. As I type in here, I love brackets and save, it automatically updated directly within Chrome without me having to go through that whole rigmarole of saving, reloading, etc. So very, very, very cool stuff. Uh, and again, this is just all kind of baked in there. And with the idea of being, you know, let's try to make your development work that much easier. Any questions on that before I go on? And I, I still want to make sure people are seeing everything look okay. Um, Marlon, your question about brackets and edge code, I will be talking about that a little bit later. Andy Parker, you're asking if this is using the Winery API. I don't believe it is. I know Adam Lehman is in the room, and Adam can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it is. Dan, how may it handle projects that are not in the web root? Uh, yeah, that's Dan Wilson. That's a great question. I'm going to show you right now. Uh, first off, Dan, uh, this particular folder is not in a web accessible portion, uh, but Brackets is able to serve it up just fine. Notice it used a dynamic port. But what if it was a virtual host? If you click on this drop down, uh, drop down and go into project settings, you can actually specify a URL. So if this was dev.brackets.org, for example, I can specify that root URL and then that would be used for the uh, live development. And hopefully that makes sense. Dan, just let me know if not. And Adam, thank you for covering that. Uh, Ray Villalobos is a possible to work with SAS unless. Uh, I haven't used SAS unless with brackets, but I know uh, it works in terms of I believe color coding is in. Uh, if you mean like saving and having it auto generate the proper CSS, I don't believe that's in there. I know that there's a TypeScript extension that adds color support for TypeScript, and I believe you can also add in the auto generation as well. I'll be talking about plugins in a bit later. Yeah, as much as I bragged about being a CSS person. I don't do a lot with uh, SAS and less yet. Okay. All right, so I think I'm caught up on the questions. Let's carry on. Get this re-maximized. All righty, another really kind of cool feature is quick edit. Quick Edit is defined as essentially giving you quicker access to your CSS and, uh, CSS and JavaScript. What that means exactly, let me make this bigger again. So this was a fairly simple uh, application. My CSS is 37 lines or so. Not a lot of, of uh, CSS here, but I think we normally agree that in a larger application, your CSS file could be much, much bigger than this. And of course, you can also have multiple CSS files. So what happens if you want to work with, for example, the CSS that modifies H1? How do you know, you know where in the CSS, in your multiple CSS files, that is? Brackets has this quick edit feature, which allows me to go into a tab, do Command-E, 
and get immediate access to not only the CSS files that are related to my project, but also the exact precise rule. And let me actually re-shrink this again and re-shrink this as well. Just to be clear, that editor in there is a live editor. And as I go in here and edit, oops, this one, I can actually see the live changes. So what's cool here is that I'm actually tweaking H1's CSS elements without having to even open the CSS file. I can go in there, I can modify the color again, like so. I can actually save the file within the other file and then close it out. This works with CSS. Uh, it also works with JavaScript as well. You want to be a little bit careful about you know, trying to get a uh, quick edit on something that may be minified. In this case, I have an extremely simple JavaScript library called lib.js. Within my document uh, load event, I'm calling a function called cowbell. If I've forgotten what cowbell does, I can run the exact same quick edit on that JavaScript function and actually load it and see the results. And if I wanted to, I could correct something in here like so, and this would actually change the JavaScript function directly. So again, if you're focused on this particular index, uh, index.html file, you can actually edit the related files without having to actually leave this file. It's all about making things that much speedier, uh, that much quicker to work with. I want to point something else out as well, which I think is kind of cool. If I want to modify the color, and I love this. Let me try this one more time. FF, I can actually get a color picker on my color, and I just found this today. If I go and play with the colors here and find something that looks a bit nicer, like uh, teal or whatever this is, notice that it's live updating. Uh, both the browsers still, obviously, but also the code in there, so I can see the RGB. If I tweak anything with the opacity, note that it immediately rewrites it to RGBA. Uh, and I just found this this morning. I think that is really, really darn cool. Because frankly, I've actually forgotten this syntax so many times. And with brackets writing it for me, it just makes it that much easier. Any questions on that? Andy, yes, that's, that's the plan. Just for you, man. <laughs> All right, I don't see any questions in the speaker pod, so I will continue on. Oh, I see Ray. Ray V, you have a question for me. Ray, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about that uh, later in terms of extensions. Uh, there was someone actually recently posted an example of PHP with brackets, being able to do PHP dev uh, within brackets. I don't have that URL handy, but I'll try to get it towards the end once we're doing a Q&A. But yeah, there is an extension uh, support for uh, adding different types of languages to brackets. Sweet, so let's get back. And this time I think I can leave this maximized. So some other features that you may be uh, interested in seeing, there's a quick open and JS lint feature. Let me show these real quick. And for quick open, it essentially allows me to say, you know what, I need to quickly find something related to my project. Uh, Command Shift O gives me a drop down of all my files and quickly go in here and say, let's get this particular library open. Another feature I like having is the JS lint support. I can enable it uh, directly in my view menu by doing enable JS lint. And I can actually start seeing all my problems and begin to correct them. As you see, as I go on and on, JS lint is automatically updating. So I think this will make my code perfect. And sweet, I even get a little gold star from JS lint uh, showing me that it's happy. If I were to make things not good again, you can see it comes back and it's flagged as red. Again, if you are a big JS Lint user, it's built in directly and very, very easy to use. So what about stuff that you want to do that are not in brackets? 
Uh, it's all well and good to say Brackets is focused on doing web development and only web development, uh, but there, there may be that one particular thing that you really, really need your editor to do. Well, Brackets actually has an, a full extension API. This allows you to do multiple things with Brackets. So for example, you can add new keyboard combos. Uh, you can create new panels and uh, new types of inline editors. You can handle different types of files. And I mentioned this uh, a few minutes ago, but someone has actually built in an extension for TypeScript. So you can actually get code handling for the TypeScript language directly within Brackets. And people always ask me about Cold Fusion support. Uh, there's not an extension right now, but the, the bones for adding that, the, the, the support, are within brackets. So in terms of doing things for PHP, Python, whatever new language of the month may come up, uh, there is an extension support within brackets so that you can add whatever you would like. By the way, a bunch of these exist already. I'll be showing some links at the end. Uh, many, many extensions are out there right now. I think almost uh, near 30 or so. So I'm just gonna show a few of them real quick. Uh, I just ran JS Lint. If you think JS Lint is a bit too strict, you can turn that off and use a JS Hint extension. Uh, and JS Hint, you can see right there, is being a bit more nice about my code. Uh, in fact, I let's see if I can make it show something because it seems to be very, very nice. Uh, so again, it's just not complaining at all, which is good, I suppose. Another thing I like, uh, I am a big fan of caniuse.com. If you've never seen it before, go to caniuse.com. Uh, this is one of the best sites out there for answering the question of what is the support for you know, feature so-and-so. So if your client comes in and says, you know, I want to use Canvas on my new website, uh, you can actually go to caniuse, type in Canvas, and get the exact support uh, for where it is safe to use Canvas. And you can even just give them a total number, like, hey, it has 83% support. So I use this a heck of a lot in my own development. I thought it'd be nice to actually have this within brackets. So I built an extension that just creates a little bar at the bottom, a little panel, that allows me within here to say, let's say CSS3 selectors. And I can actually see right in brackets the support there. So while I'm actually typing code, I can use the can I use reference directly within brackets. And again, this was not something that brackets supported, but something that I thought would make my life easier. So I built the extension and put it out there and it just plain works. Very, very nice. Another one that you may be interested in, uh, along with JavaScript hinting, you may want to do uh, CSS linting as well. And you can see in this here, there's one complaint total, which is not bad. And actually, uh, this was the default HTML that comes with brackets. I modified it, so I made it uh, not totally lint compatible. So that's totally my fault. But again, these are things that are just built into brackets. And all of these extensions are built using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So certainly other editors out there have extension APIs. Uh, there's not many of them out there, I think, that make it as easy as this. If you already know HTML, JavaScript, CSS, et cetera, then you can start adding new features to brackets. And I, you know, again, I'm, I'm a big fan of doing stuff like this, even when it's only me who will be using it. Uh, but again, there's also a community out there, people sharing extensions. So if you do build something cool, be sure to share it. Any questions on that? Uh, this can I use is better than the ST2 one. I didn't know Sublime Text had a can I use extension. Um, I will say I had some help on the layout for that because my initial layout was pretty bad. Uh, John Farrar, second Ray V. What about dynamic languages? Again, if you're asking about you know uh, syntax support, the support is in there for brackets to add support for other languages. Right now, I'm not aware of a Cold Fusion extension yet. Submit, is there any extension for Git? I don't think there's one yet. Uh, I'll be sharing some links towards the end, and I'll share the link for where you can find the list of extensions, and you can double check it. 
it's a wiki, so it gets up it gets updated pretty bit. Okay, so I think I am caught up, so let's carry on. All right, so what if you want to use this right now? Because I, I told you earlier that you can download this right now. So yes, you can download this right now. However, keep in mind that Brackets is not done. It is not 100%, you know, 1.0 yet. It still has a few rough edges. Uh, very early in the Brackets development, you couldn't even make a new file in the editor. You know, uh, we were more concerned about testing things like color coding, testing typing performance, stuff like that. Things like basic file crud was just assumed that it could be added later. So this, I can say brackets is probably not ready to be your primary editor yet. Uh, for me personally, I am using it at about 80% of the time. Uh, the last two versions have pretty much added things that have made me, when I'm using, for example, Sublime Text, I'll do something in Sublime Text that works better in brackets, and I'll, I'll just realize, what in the heck am I doing? So for me personally, I'm, I've shifted to more than 50% using brackets. Just kind of keep in mind, you know, if you download brackets, don't uninstall your other editors. Uh, be ready for a few rough spots, uh, and just kind of keep that in mind as you use it. So for the links for where you can get brackets, the, the, the number one URL and really the easiest one to remember is brackets.io. Uh, from there, you can get to everything else that I'm about to show. There are docs on the GitHub repo for brackets. <clears throat> as, as an example, uh, here is the uh, keyboard shortcuts. I always keep that handy because I have a horrible memory for shortcuts. Uh, but you can see there's a lot here. There is a Google group, very good place to ask questions. There is a place to file bug reports, and obviously you want to check first to make sure that uh, something has not been reported already. If you want to know what the future of Brackets is, there is a public Trello site for you. You can, you can see everything being worked on in the next sprint. You can see everything being thought of for you know future down the road. Uh, you can actually look at this as a way to contribute. Uh, this is not just Adobeans working on it. This is a real open source project with real contributions from people outside of Adobe. And we're extremely uh, open to you know taking in those submissions. So if you have any inclination at all to help out and help make brackets better, you are definitely welcome to do so. There is an ERC uh, channel for brackets if you want to go old school. I'm old school, but I think ERC's even more old school than I am. And there's a Twitter account as well. But really, the main thing you want to remember is brackets.io. And from there, you can get to pretty much everywhere. It's also a YouTube channel in case you want to see some videos out there of people doing cool things with brackets. So that was a lot of talk about brackets. And I've seen that someone's already asked about edge code. So what in the heck is edge code and how does it compare to brackets? So edge code number one is part of the Creative Cloud. And by the way, uh, if you've not signed up yet, there are some very, very, very cool things in the Edge, I'm sorry, in the Creative Cloud uh, library. Uh, it does not cost you anything to sign up. So I strongly encourage you to sign up and take a look at our offerings in there. It looks the exact same. Yeah, this is a screenshot. Uh, you shouldn't see anything different here except for the title bar on the very, very top. So what exactly is different about Edge Code? Well, number one, it has a different icon, and that's that's very, very important stuff. Uh, the other thing is that it's going to ship with extensions that are tailored for some of the Edge or Adobe services. So if you're using Edge Code, then we're going to assume that you probably care about other things that Adobe has or other services and we'll ship edge code with some of those extensions to make uh, your life uh, a bit easier to use those services. Uh, right now, brackets uh, may be a bit bleeding edge at times. There may be bugs that crop up in sprints, uh, or if you get the latest from GitHub, there may be a bug at 8 a.m. that's gone at 6 p.m. Edge code has a, for now anyway, a slower release cycle, so it's gonna be a bit more stable. As for how it actually operates, it's gonna be the exact same loads up just as quick you can see uh, what I want to show though right away is some of the cool features uh, some of the cool extensions that 
uh, you can use within Edge Code. The first one I'm going to show here is I'm going to do a font family. And what I see here is a drop down of fonts. These are all coming from the Edge Web Fonts service. And I can actually go in here and see previews of these. I could search for a font. Uh, I'm really, really bad at design, so I'll just type in foo and see if that matches anything. Not surprised. Uh, Comic Sans, Courier, C, etc. Uh, you can also browse by library. This one I think always looks pretty cool. And I can never get over the name of this font, Una Fractur Cook. I, I, I'm so going to use this on, on a website. I can select it, hit done. It drops it in there for me automatically. It also gives me the JavaScript code that I need to paste into my HTML to make this work. So if I were to go ahead and copy that, paste it in, save it, I can then see this running in my website. And again, this is using Edge Web Fonts. Very, very cool service. The other extension that I want to uh, demonstrate is PhoneGap support. You can see I have a little icon up here for PhoneGap build. I'm going to click it. I'm going to provide my PhoneGap build login credentials. I've already signed up for this. If you guys don't know what PhoneGap build is, just hit me up later in the main Q&A. I'll be happy to rave about it. Uh, but what this is doing is talking to the PhoneGap build service. And it's got all of my projects. What's nice is that from here, I can directly fire off new rebuilds and create new mobile applications. I can also take this existing project and link this with a new PhoneGap build project. So if you don't know what PhoneGap build is, it's a cloud-based service to take HTML and create mobile-based applications. So directly within my editor, I can create a link, set it up with a new application, and it will interact directly with PhoneGap build, do all the uploads, generate my binaries for me, and allow me essentially to you know, basically write code and get iOS, Android, Windows, Blackberry, et cetera, all these applications from directly from within my editor. So this is extremely, extremely powerful stuff. In terms of where you get it, again, you want to sign up for Creative Cloud. This does not cost you anything. You can find out more about Edge Code as well as Edge Web Fonts at the html.adobe.com site. And if, not, if you've not checked that out, please you know, take some time to check it. So I just showed a lot of stuff real quick. Let me switch over to the editors. Uh, Caesar, let me uh, hit your question first. Yes, there's an extension for brackets that will do themes. So I actually switched to the default theme for today. But the one that I like is XQ Dark. Actually, no, it is, I think, Twilight. Nope, it was XQ Dark. Uh, but yeah, uh, there is theme support. And you can find that on the extension list. Let me go show you guys that right now. It's on the wiki. And I'll paste this into the, uh, into the chat so you guys can copy it. And bam, I said about 30, I would say maybe more than 30. Let me uh, cut and paste this for you guys. Yeah, Marlon, uh, and I'm assuming you guys can see the question, but if not, he's asking if the extensions for brackets are compatible with edge code. Yes, exact same API. Uh, well, the only thing I'll point out there, Marlon, is that with brackets having a more rapid release cycle than Edge Code, uh, the latest brackets may have something in its API that's not yet in Edge Code. Okay, so someone may write an extension for the latest brackets that would not work in Edge Code, and hopefully that distinction makes sense. James, it's it's certainly not that we're against a CF extension at all. It's just that the work was done to create the ability to add that, that type of support in. That was more, I think, the important thing. You know, they could have added support for adding language extensions a lot earlier on. Uh, instead, you know, we waited. We wanted to make sure we did it right. 
and did it in such a way that made it easier for people to add whatever they want to for any language. Uh, we are looking to the community to create a CF extension. Uh, if you want to do that, I definitely encourage you. Uh, let me know if I can help. But right now, I'm not aware of anyone working on one. And I think I see a question in the chat as well. Yeah, if you guys asked anything in the chat that I missed, if you could re-paste uh, it or retype it back in the bottom QA so I can see it there, I would definitely appreciate it. Uh, Bionic, uh, can you customize or create your own theme? That I don't know. Uh, my understanding is that the brackets extension for themes is uh, working with the underlying code mirror part of brackets. So if you check the code mirror docs for themes, I believe that you can add your own there. I have not done that because I do not do good design. I would make brackets look so horrible, I would never be allowed to demo it again. Any questions? Anything you guys want to see? While well, I'm still uh, screen sharing. If you guys are all done, we may just wrap it up. How do you, oh, what, no, wait, I said, okay. <laughs> Megan, you move things on me, you scared me. And Megan, uh, there was uh, somebody posted a question that apparently just got lost. I apologize if that person could ask again. I was about sublime text too. I will try to answer that. Oh, and you're all welcome. And, and definitely, you guys hit me up if you have any questions at all following this. Blame Megan. But yeah, that person's still in the room who had the uh, sublime question. I'll, I'll definitely take a stab at answering it. And you can just use the chat if you want. Danada. Isizubu. Pardon my horrible Spanish. Great speech, my presentation, I tweet and share links. Thank you, Bionic. How do you see uh, brackets being a better option than Sublime Text 2 in the future? Uh, I think brackets is better uh, in terms of extensibility. Uh, I think the fact that I can use HTML skills to add parts to the editor is a step above Sublime Text 2. Uh, and to be clear, I, I, I love Sublime Text 2. Uh, that was my editor for a long time in, in the last year or so. Uh, so to me, I think the extensibility is what makes the difference. I mean, uh, Sublime Text 2 is also extensible, but being able to reuse HTML with brackets in the extension layer, I think, is a cool deal. Again, that's, that's my opinion. At this exact moment in time, Sublime Text 2 is definitely a bit more polished. Like I said, for me, you know, brackets is becoming more than my 50% editor right now. Yeah, we have very, very smart people on Interface. Definitely people a lot smarter than uh, me. I tell you, the, the brackets code is also very cool to look at. Um, there's some really ninja-level JavaScript stuff going on there. I mean, I felt good making my little tweak there. 
uh, but there's some stuff in there that's way over my head. So it's you know, stuff that you can actually learn from as well. It's the best thing about being at Adobe. There's a lot of smart people here. Caesar, yeah, in the last uh, bill, that's what landed. So yeah, you you someone could do a cold fusion language support now. And James, yeah, I'm I'm sorry if that point wasn't clear. Everything in brackets is HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. If you go to the GitHub repo, you can see where everything is built. Uh, Bionic, there's not an officially planned version, but there are people working on it. In fact, I just saw, give me one second, Bionic. I was just there on the URL. And I'm trying to remember where it was. Yeah, I may, I may fail here. Let me just look. Yeah, so if I if I can't find this Bionic, it's somewhere. It's definitely somewhere on the wiki, which is oh and Caesar, that answers your question as well. So the wiki does have documentation. For example, I showed the uh, the keyboard shortcuts a few minutes ago. No problem. About it, I'm sorry I couldn't find that URL, but I know it's it's somewhere, somewhere there. I was there earlier today. Bionic, uh, are you, is that a question or not sure what you're saying there, Bionic? Yeah, so a Zubu, that's what I was, I was, I was talking to Bionic. Uh, there's not an officially planned version for uh, Linux, but there's people in the community working on it, and I couldn't find that URL. Let me look real quick in Google. Aha, okay, here we go. This is unofficial, but that's what I was talking about earlier. And it's on the roadmap, uh, but there's no official build for it yet. Caesar, I, <laughs> I've seen people ask that, uh, you know, being able to use brackets on a mobile device. I think it's crazy, but people keep asking that, so I know people want to do it. Uh, I, I can't say that that's going to happen, uh, but I know people keep asking about it. You know, the only scenario I could see that making sense is like you're on the road and the client asks for something impossible and you need to edit code on a mobile device. But outside of that, I, I would, as much as I love my tablets, I'd hate to write code on them. And maybe I'm crazy, but. Yeah. Uh, Caesar, is 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 what Dan's saying closer to what you meant? Let 
Caesar, are you talking about like running it from a thumb drive? Uh, it, as far as I know, you can execute it from, from a thumb drive. I mean, it would have to be the same operating system, obviously, but it's not like a typical application that, you know, puts things in the Windows registry, for example. I don't think it's doing that at all. Uh, honestly, I, I haven't tested that, Caesar. I'd recommend asking on the Google group to be uh, uh, sure of exactly where that makes sense. That's my way of saying I don't know and covering my butt. And let me know, Caesar. Uh, I, I'd be interested in, in uh, hearing. I'll stick around for two more minutes. We still have 20 people here. If there's any last questions before I go, this is your final request to ask. And then I get the pleasure of running to the AT&T store to get a new SIM card for my wife's phone. I do have a good job. Thank you, Bionic. I'm going to let NHOJ have the last word here, and then I'm going to head out. By the way, thank you guys for showing up. I definitely appreciate it. You're welcome, Dan. Yeah, uh, in, in HOJ, the, the earlier sprints were definitely rough. <laughs> and with that, uh, I'm going to say goodbye, and you guys have a great afternoon.